Welcome to Knowledge Graphs, week number five. And this is hands-on number 5.2, where we want to talk about OpenRefine. OpenRefine is quite a powerful and open source tool to work with messy data. We can uh, do data cleaning with it. We can also transform it from one format to another. And we can also create uh, simple knowledge graphs from this. And this is exactly what we want to do in this hands-on. And the data that we are going to transform into a small knowledge graph is this CSV file, which is just some structured data. We have here some name, it's a first name, last name, a title of a, some person, then we have a birth date here and an organization. So very simple data about just persons working for an organization. And we want to have this as a knowledge graph. And OpenRefine simply works um, with a graphical user interface here that you can use in your browser. And we start, we select our structured data set here and import it. And you can see we have a small table here and we create our project, which is also done very fast. Let me see if I can make this even bigger. Right. So. Let's take a look at this table. We have five persons in this table with a first name, a last name. Some of them have a title. They all have a birth date and an organization they are affiliated with. And how can we now transform this to RDF? For this, we need an extension, which is called RDF Transform. And before you do this task, you should install it. And uh, in OpenHPI, we will, of course, link all of these resources for you. OK, so let's take again a look at our table. I can see here that we have first name and last name in two separate columns. But in our knowledge graph, I would like to have this together in just a single column as a name. And OpenRefine gives us a possibility to yeah, change this and to join these columns. And this is exactly what I want to do now. I go simply to this column, go to Edit Column, and I will join them. I will join the first name column and the last name column. The separator between both uh, each value should just be a space. Um, I want to write everything in a new column and we just call this name and we want to delete the joint columns. And this is working and instantly we have yeah, edited here this table and we can see that both columns were joined. And now let's take a look at this RDF transformation. We go to RDF transform and we can go here on edit. And then now we have here something that looks a bit strange and it may be a bit complicated, but we will get to it in a second. When we go to preview, we can see what currently, if we were to export this, our RDF file would look like. We have, as usual, um, in RDF Turtle, here our prefixes. Then we have for each person here some kind of ID, which doesn't look very nice. We will take care of it in a second. Then we have here the properties, which are simply the headers of the respective columns. And then we here we have the values in the columns. And we can already see that it looks quite simple. So everything is just illiteral. And of course, we are working with knowledge graphs, so we want to change it and bring more meaning into this data. So let's start. In the beginning, we can also see that we have here our base IRI, which is some local host, and we don't want that. We want to change it. So let's edit, and we want to call this, since we are working here with persons in museums, we just call this for now museumdata.org. Click Apply, and then we can see that immediately, also here in the preview, our RDF document is changed. Right, and we continue. Um, we already said that for each person we have just some random number there and we also want to change this. So what we want is we want to edit this and I would like instead of just calling it 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, I would like to um, add person to this identifier here. So I just click hit person and then the respective value. So um, this 
yeah, URI for each person would then be HTTP museumdata.org and then person12340. All right, this already looks a bit better. Also, when we go to the RDF document here, we can see that it has changed. Next, next let's take a look at birth date. Because here, as we can see, birth date is simply a text, but we can do better, right? So we want to format this as a proper date, right? And again, if we go to preview, we can see that we have now a proper, uh, yeah, this is now properly formatted with XSD date. And here also the pref prefix XSD was added automatically. So this is quite handy. Let's continue. Now we have here these properties, which are name, title, birth date, and organization. But so far, they mean actually nothing. And we can change this. So we can here also add vocabularies that we find suiting for these properties. And we would like to do that. So we have, for example, a name and title. And from my experience, I already know that um, we could use, for example, the FOV vocabulary. But if we are not so sure, we can also yeah, use some services and simply search what um, would fit best for us. And if we go here and search for name, then we get a lot of vocabularies that also use these properties and also FOV is in them. And when we go to FOV now, we can see in the ontology description, we have here name, and we also have title, for example. And you can read in detail what that means. In our Open Refine, we can now define what namespace we would like to add. And um, as a prefix for fov, we will add fov. And then we immediately get a suggestion to use the fov namespace. We quick, uh, click OK. And then fov was added here. So we can just simply use it. And then we also have birth date. Unfortunately, FOF uh, doesn't have a birth date property, but for example, DBpedia does. So we add the DBpedia ontology here, which is also suggested to us immediately. We hit OK, and then we can see here that this was added to our namespace list. So let's start to edit these properties. For name, we can simply write FOF. name. And you can see here that this um, URI is immediately there. We add it. And we can see in the preview that fourth name is now part of our knowledge graph. We do exactly the same thing for title. We have here fourth title. And we also add this. And it already looks much nicer. For birth date, we set that birth date um, should come from DBpedia, um, yeah, from DBpedia, the DBpedia ontology. So we add DBO birth date. We, it's also directly suggested here, and we add this property. Cool. So if you now look at it, it already looks much nicer. We have now actually URIs f um, from yeah, existing ontologies as the best practices determine. And then we have here the property organization. And in this case, I determine <laughs> that no other vocabulary here would fit for us. So we can define this um, for ourselves. And we use our existing namespace that we have here for museumdata.org. And we simply call this affiliation, because these persons are somehow affiliated with an organization. And we add this here. Nice. We save it. Oh, no, we take a look at the preview one more time. And this looks already quite nice. But then we can also see that we have here these organizations, which are all museums. And they are just literates. But I think we can do better. And we can yeah, put more meaning into this. And I will show you in a second what it looks like. At first, we save this. And now we simply hit OK. And then we can see that it says save RDF transform. And 
our knowledge graph was saved within OpenRefine. And now again, let's take a look at this organization column. And what we can do here is we can connect these organizations, which are just literals, to the respective wiki data items. And this we can do with a function here that is called reconciliation. And we start it and we select a service here that we want to use. And in this case, I select the Wikidata service, but you can, you don't have to use Wikidata. You can here add your own service um, or some, some other standard services like GND also provides a service here. But in this case, I would like to use Wikidata. And then, um, yeah, we already talked about it that in the column, we usually, we mostly have museums. And this is also what um, OpenRefine here already realized. And, but they are not all art museums. The type of museums um, is a bit more general. So I just click that all of them are somehow uh, museums, which helps to narrow kind of the narrow down the candidates here for open refine. And then we simply hit start reconciling. And this takes just um, a minute to complete for a small data set like this. Of course, with when you have <laughs> a huge table here, then it take will take a very long time. And it already finished. And now we have here, you can see they're kind of highlighted blue now. We can see that the Rijksmuseum is not just a literal anymore. It was now um, yeah, connected to the wiki data uh, entity here, which you can see with this queue number. And we also have a picture and a small description. It is the museum in Amsterdam, Netherlands. The same for the National Art Museum of Ukraine. There's also a Pergamon Museum in Berlin, which is correctly um, annotated. Then we have the Cancun Underwater Museum, which was correctly recognized, and the International Banana Museum in California. And this is very cool. And now we get yeah, to add more meaning into our knowledge graph. And to visualize this better, we can also yeah, create a new column with the actual Wikidata IDs. And here we go simply go to back to reconcile and then add entity identifier column. The column name should be um, organization ID. And now here you can see we added a new column with Wikidata IDs and yeah, this looks quite nice. But we can do even more because now we have connected these organizations to Wikidata. So now we can also use the information in Wikidata about them and also add them to our graph. And we will do this in the following way. We go back to this column, go to edit column, and then we can click on add columns from reconciled values. And here we can choose the properties um, which are used in the Wikidata uh, entities. For example, we can for these museums add the country, a coordinate location, a logo, um, the official website and so on. And in this case, we are interested in the country. We hit it and we can also yeah, um, see here the result for Rijksmuseum it's Netherlands, for the Pergamon Museum it's Germany and so on. We ha also have the possibility to remove these or configure them further, but I think they look good and we can add them to our table, which is also working quite fast and should be done in a second. Yeah, and this gives us really the possibility to enrich our graph. And now it's done and we can see, I make it a bit larger again, um, that we also have the Wikidata entities here, for example, for the Cancun Underwater Museum, it is connected to the country Mexico or the National Art Museum of, of Ukraine, of course, to Ukraine. And this is just to give you yeah, some examples on what to do with OpenRefine and how to convert simple structured data to a knowledge graph and also connect it to uh, Wikidata or other services to enrich your graph. And we hope this is helpful and gives you a few insights and yeah, have fun with OpenRefine.